Have you ever had that feeling where you just can't sleep? Maybe it was because you were nervous about that big math test coming up. Or you just really wanted to finish that video game you bought. Sleep is one of our most fundamental needs as humans. And yet, almost all of us will experience some sort of sleep disorder in our life. In this video, we will take a deeper look into one of the most common sleep disorders, insomnia. You've probably heard of it before. Let's start by talking about some of the symptoms. There are three important symptoms of insomnia. The first symptom, difficulty falling asleep, is also known as early insomnia. This means it takes more than 30 minutes to fall asleep. The second symptom is difficulty staying asleep also known as middle insomnia. Your sleep is disrupted and you wake up throughout the night for a total of 30 minutes or more. The third symptom of insomnia is early morning awakenings, also known as late insomnia. This is when you wake up at least 30 minutes earlier than your intended time. Now that we learned the insomnia symptoms, you may be wondering how common are these symptoms? To give you an idea, I'm going to talk about a study where researchers sampled 2,000 Canadian adults to see how many reported insomnia symptoms. In this sample, almost 30% reported difficulty falling asleep, 15% stated they had trouble staying asleep, and 10% said they woke up earlier than intended. Overall, 47% of the sample had multiple symptoms of insomnia. 14% had all three symptoms of insomnia. So you may be wondering, is having the symptoms of insomnia enough for a diagnosis? To be diagnosed with insomnia, you need to meet specific criteria. First, you need to have at least one of the three symptoms mentioned before. Second, the insomnia symptoms must last at least one month and occur at least three times per week with adequate opportunity for sleep. Finally, the insomnia must cause you distress and impairment in your daily functioning. Examples of this include tiredness, lack of energy, irritability, and low work productivity. As you can see, there are many criteria you need to meet for an insomnia diagnosis in addition to having the symptoms. How does the amount of sleep differ between insomniacs and non-insomniacs? In a study comparing the quantity of sleep between individuals with insomnia and those without insomnia, total sleep time was significantly lower for insomniacs, who had an average of 6.3 hours of sleep, compared to non-insomniacs, who had an average of 7.4 hours of sleep. The study also examined risk factors of insomnia which we will talk about now. The first is sex. Females are 1.5 times more likely than men to be diagnosed with insomnia. The second is age. Insomnia is more common in older age groups. The third risk factor is marital status. Divorced, separated, or widowed individuals have a higher risk of insomnia compared to singles and married people. Education is another factor of insomnia. People with lower education are more likely to be insomniacs compared to those with higher education. Finally, physical and mental health status is another risk factor of insomnia. Individuals who rate their physical and mental health as low are more likely to be insomniacs. Now that we know the risk factors of insomnia, how can we manage it? There are a few strategies available. One strategy is to complete a sleep log. Examples of information you would write in your sleep log include when you slept and woke up, how many times you woke up throughout the night, and how long you napped for. Another strategy is to improve your sleep hygiene by restricting stimulants in the evening, such as caffeinated beverages, alcohol and smoking, and going to bed at the same time every night. Visiting a sleep clinic is another option. 
With referral from a family doctor, a sleep clinic can help assess, diagnose, and determine the best treatment for managing insomnia. Thank you for your time. We hope this video gave you a better overview of insomnia. To learn more about it, check out the following links.